Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni on Wednesday delivered his 2019 budget, in which the bailout of ESCOM emerged as a dominant theme. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this and other issues. Hi, Terence. Hi, Shamal. What did Mboweni announce and what is the background to this? Well, he's announced a 60 billion rand injection into ESCOM over the next three years, so 23 billion rand a year to try and give that utility some support. Now, he made it quite clear that this comes with strings attached and it's not going to be unconditional and that's going to be quite strictly monitored by government. So he's uh, in the process of, uh, with, hi with his colleague, Pravin Gordon, appointing a, a chief reconfiguration officer, CRO. He's going to act as a curator of the government's money, of this uh, injection, to make sure it is used for what uh, the government wants it to be used for. And in this case, they really want to help Eskom deal with its uh, re debt repayments and to help it with the restructuring. So the background is Eskom's got this huge debt star uh, pile uh, overhanging it. It stands at 420 billion rand at the moment, and they haven't finished with the two big capital projects yet, so, uh, Madupi and Cusilia. So we're going to see that debt burden rise over the next few years. And without sort of, uh, sort of, with this sort of relief, what they've got, the 23 billion rand a year, and the potential for tariff increases, um, and also recovery from non-payment and things like that, that debt burden could rise to as high as 600 billion rand in the coming year. So that is really the context. Eskom is, is uh, debt laden. It is no longer, it's, it's technically insolvent, according to the uh, Public Enterprises Minister and uh, it, it needed some relief from the shareholder. So the way uh, uh, Minister Mboweni has framed this is a bit like the shareholder, you know, it's, it, it can't go to the market as a private company would in terms of going to many shareholders and doing a rights issue, but this is effectively how they see it, injecting it for a specific purpose. And he made a, a, a real mention that this is not for salary increases, and that dovetailed with his speech where he announced that uh, there would be a bit of a salary freeze across the higher levels of government from the president and uh, parliamentarians. And I imagine the salary freeze at Eskom would also apply for the higher levels of executives and the board. So I think uh, um, whether it's going to be enough is the other question. Um, and we know that Eskom had asked Treasury to consider taking 100 billion rands worth of its debt and moving it across to the, na the National Treasury, to the fiscus. And that's obviously been rejected firmly by, uh, by the minister, He's saying the, b the debt has been incurred by Eskom, they need to repay it, but they are prepared to give them some relief in the form of this injection, which um, has implications for the budget balance, ser serious implications. We're now seeing that our, um, our, our deficit is going to widen and stay wider for longer than we initially anticipated. And our debt to GDP ratio, which is a key ratio that the ratings agencies are looking at, is going to breach that, six, that dreaded 60% level. It was always going to get very close to that level, but now we definitely are going to peak at over 60% debt to GDP. He also made some statements about the future of support to state-owned enterprises in general. Yes, I think very much along that cur curatorship or curator line, saying that when banks lean on governments around the world, curators uh, oversee uh, that the way that money is, uh, that support is uh, administered. And uh, his, his first message to state-owned companies, please don't use us as your first resort. Come to us almost as last resort. But I think a lot of state-owned companies, whether it's SAA, whether it's SABC, whether it's Eskom, are at that point of last resort and now. So there, there is a, there's a queuing up along the Ben Skumon Highway of, of state-owned enterprise company executives going up to ask the National Treasury in Church Street, Pretoria, that to give them some relief and to support. And uh, he's saying that there's going to be a review of, for instance, how guarantees are given to state-owned companies, because these guarantees, although they're off <coughs> the, the fiscal balance sheet, they are becoming uh, they're becoming a contingent, well, they're a contingent liability. Those contingent liabilities are now starting to realize, as we see with Eskom, in, in the form of the 69 billion rand, which we must realize comes after other support that's been given to Eskom over the years, not least the 350 billion rands of guarantees that have been extended to the utility. And 
uh, the unsubordinated loan, which was converted into, into equity recently. So the ESKIM has had some support from the shareholder over the last 10 years. But the situation has got so bad at the utility that this, um, this was really an issue of keeping it as a going concern, I think. So it came to that. But on state-owned enterprise as a whole, there's this feeling, you know, uh, we are going to be much more uh, one circumspect in the way we go about giving a state on companies uh, money uh, uh, or guarantees and two when we do give the, that money they're going to it's going to come with conditionalities as he, as he says there's no more free lunches the support to escom led to a deterioration in the fiscal framework will the announcement and the explanation given be sufficient to avoid a downgrade I think that's the next big step, you know, so we've got this very um, unpalatable budget out the way. Everyone knew it was going to be a very difficult budget. There's just no more space. So the good news is they didn't try and dip back into personal income tax rises. The hikes were really limited to the sin taxes and the fuel levies. I think that's the only really area where they're looking to increase uh, re the revenue take. Uh, the revenue take for 2018-19 again was revised down by another 15 billion rand. We know that SARS has been under major governance strains and uh, we've seen um, some ugly uh, developments uh, that, we've, uh, that the Nugent Commission has had to under investigate and has made recommendations and we see the government acting on those recommendations. So there's a clean up at SARS so hopefully there will be some sort of turnaround as they take the interventions that they need to take to, to shore up, you know, um, uh, the revenue that they that is due to government um, and is not being paid because the, of the loopholes that, or not just the loopholes, uh, actually the uh, sort of uh, malfeasance that entered the, the system at SARS. So that will hopefully tighten things up, and we'll start seeing uh, those who aren't paying their, their fair share starting to pay again, or at least um, be nervous not to do that anymore. I think also the I think the, the, there's this issue of tax morality or um, the, the call for people to boycott tax, I think that was firmly hit on the head. I think most of the parties are seeing that as fairly irresponsible and I think we have moved from that narrative. But you know, there's, there's a problem in the sense that there's been so much corruption in the system for so long that uh, taxpayers do feel fatigued. So I think the good news was that they didn't dip in. Um, uh, so that's, uh, you know, if you can take one, one strain of positive from the, the, this very ugly budget. And the other good news is it's quite a realistic um, a, a sort of approach to the problems. You know, there was, Eskim does need support. It, it is state owned. Ultimately, the guaranteed debt is going to land on, on the National Treasury's plate if Eskim cannot pay. So you have to have a realistic approach to this very difficult problem. And I think we've seen the start of that. The t fact that it's tied very much to the unbundling and restructuring of ESKIM, I think, is, is very positive. And I think the rating agencies will take some of those intangibles away, so the intangible positives away. But the, whether, the, whether they'll be, able, when they do the sit down and do the actual uh, uh, rating exercise, weigh those intangible positives against the very tangible negatives of the fiscal slippage of the, the rise in the debt to GDP ratio above that 60% threshold. And this is after we've continually over promised and under delivered in terms of fiscal consolidation. I think it, as Minister Mboini said, it's, it's going to be a very difficult conversation. And as he also said, they were damned if they did, if they were damned if they didn't. And I think it's now very much the ball is in Moody's court. They're the last one to sustain us on an investment grade rating. And the official cycle is the 29th of March, the day of Brexit, <laughs> to announce whether our, what our rating is. And I think this budget isn't enough to trigger an out-of-cycle review. And I think that was the concern when there was the talk of uh, you know, transferring the debt across from Eskom balance sheet across to the government balance sheet, uh, whether that would be sufficient to trigger an out-of-cycle downgrade. I think here they've got time to digest there's time for the Treasury officials to go on their roadshows and to speak to them and to try and convince them. But it's really going to be about the art of persuasion and the art of the possible, which is politics, I suppose. But whether, whether they're going to be able to win when they actually have to go back and look at their bond hold, bondholders and give a fair rating, whether they're going to be able to keep us at investment grade or not, I think is the big question. 
and one that we'll have to wait for uh, another month, I think, to see. Thank you. That's the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.